Welcome to Lecture Online and now we're going to talk about some different ways in which we can solve two linear equations. A linear equation is an equation where both the y and the x value in the equation is to the first order. So there's no second order, there's no quadratic terms in there at all. No, nothing to the square term, nothing to the second power, third power, anything like that. And so here's a couple of examples of what a linear equation looks like. Now linear equation, by the name, can be described graphically by a straight line and we'll learn all about that. The straight line has of course a slope and a y-intercept. In this case you can see that one of the lines has a negative slope and it crosses the y-axis over there. So this would be the y-axis and this here is the x-axis and here you see the second line has a positive slope and crosses the y-axis over there. That would be the y-intercept. But notice that unless the two lines are parallel to each other they will at some point cross. And when they cross, that's usually termed the solution of the two equations. And there's all kinds of ways in which you can represent functions in real life, in science, in business, in math, in finance, you name it. We can represent all kinds of things by linear equations. And where those two equations cross, they usually represent some sort of solution in business. It could be the profit or the cost of a business. It could be the scientific solution to an equation, a chemical equation, all kinds of things. So, how do we find the place where the two lines cross? Well, there's a lot of different ways to do that because there's a lot of, it's important and there's different techniques and so here we're going to approach eight different ways of actually how to do that. And again, what we're doing here is we're looking for the point where they cross, we're looking for the x and y value of that particular point where they cross. So, how do we do that? Well, method number one, we can use what we call a table of values. So what we're going to do is we can write these equations in terms of x equals everything else on the other side, or in this case, y equals with everything else on the other side. So this becomes our y equation, our first equation. So y1 is equal to 2x minus 5. And we're going to rewrite this equation, put the y on this side, put the x on that side. So y2 is equal to minus x plus 4. Notice that the minus y becomes positive on the left side and the x becomes negative on the right side. So now I have two equations. So now we're going to come up with a table of values. I'm going to plug in some values for x and I will find corresponding values for the first equation for y1 and for the second equation y2. All right, so what would be the first value? I always like to start with zero. If x is equal to zero, what does y1 become? And you can see y1 becomes minus five and y2 becomes plus four. So, we'll have found the solution when those two values become the same. Now, will that always be the case by plugging in integers for x? Not really, but sometimes it does, and so this is one of the techniques. All right, let's try the value x equals 1. When x equals 1, we get y equals 2 times 1 minus 5, so y1, when x equals 1, is equal to 2 times 1 minus 5, so that's 2 minus 5 or minus 3, so for y1 we get minus 3, and y2, when x is equal to 1, is equal to minus 1 plus 4, and so that would be equal to 3. Now here's a good trend. Notice that here there are a distance of 9 units between the y1 and y2 value, and notice now the distance is only 6 units. It looks like we're converging, as we call it. The values are getting closer together, so there's a correct trend here. But they're not the same yet, so I'm going, I'm going to continue. What happens when x equals 2? When x equals 2, I get 2 times 2, which is 4, minus 5, which is a minus 1. When I plug in minus 2 there, minus 2 plus 4 is a plus 2. Notice how they're getting closer and closer together. Let's try one more value. Let's try x equals 3. When x equals 3, I get 2 times 3 is 6 minus 5, which is a positive 1. Here, minus 3 plus 4, which is a positive 1. Bingo! At that point, I realized that the two y values are the same, which means my solution to my problem is that the x value that I picked would be 3 and the y value would be 1. Now, what does that look like when I put on a graph? Okay, here I have my y-axis, my x-axis, and I'm looking for x equals 3, y equals 1, 1, 2, 3, and, x, and y equals 1, so where the two meet, right there is the solution to my problem. So the solution is 3 comma 1 and that's the solution to this particular problem. What's the solution? It's the point where the two equations cross one another and I want to find the x and y values and that's how we do it using a table of values. 